Hey, right, welcome back. Looks like I have another chainsaw to play with. It's a good little chainsaw, a little Nicola. It actually has a safety device on it, unlike the last few that I worked on. It's one of those uh, bush type trimmers because you can handle it with one hand and zip through the bushes and hedges. Cut some pretty good sized logs with it. It's a 14 inch blade. <laughs> one thing I'm just noticing right off the get-go, chain's on backwards, so definitely wouldn't cut, <laughs> but I'm told it just won't start. It's pretty dirty, so let's just dig in. I'm going to assume it's carburetor. Uh, the pull cord is actually nice to see it's in the right spot. It stays in. It pulls all the way back not frayed. It's got really good compression, so it fills. So I'm going to start by pulling the plug and see if it's fouled. Well, this plastic casing has shrunk onto the spark plug, so that's not coming out. I'm going to have to remove some of this plastic before I can even think about looking at that. It's got fuel in it. I don't know how bad that fuel is. It smells terrible. It doesn't look right. So with that finding, I'm going to say this carburetor is a mess. Wow. That carburetor filter is plugged solid. Just for curiosity, I'm going to pour a little bit of real fuel in here and see if it'll sputter at all. It'll tell us if we have any spark. So let's try that. Let's just put in a little bit of fuel, close the choke, see if this will sputter. It has a start-stop switch, so I'll make sure that's in the start position. much better than I had hoped for. Took a few pulls, but it actually started. So that tells me it's gotta be carburetor. It's not spark, it's not fouled. So, let's see if we can figure out how to get to that carburetor. <laughs> see there's a plastic piece here. I'm trying to push it down through thinking that it's part of this gas tank. But as I'm looking at it, it looks like this gas tank is loose. Well, it's not that. And it does just snap in and out. So after 45 minutes playing with this thing, <laughs> I got the gas tank out. And the switch 
that I was prying on. I would have broken it if I'd have kept prying. So I'm glad I stopped when I did. Um, I need to get the throttle loose. I can't quite figure that out yet. But I'm making progress. I haven't thrown in the towel yet, but it's right here. I'm getting ready. Okay, so it's down to the throttle. That's what's holding me up at this point, and it looks like everything will come out. So that is the key. How do I get the throttle loose? So there's a pivot point right here, and there's a spring inside of that pivot point. I was able to get my needle nose pliers in there and get that spring off of that end. Now let's see if I can get it to slide out far enough to get off the other end. Boy, what a crazy design. It has a crazy hook on the bottom of this thing. It's got to hook and slide out, but I sure can't figure out how to. Well, it came off. <laughs> I don't know how I'll ever get it back on. I don't know how it came off, it just fell off. Wow. It's almost an hour to get that apart. And I don't know how I'm going to get this back in. In order to get this carburetor off now, the carburetor is mounted to the same plate that the magneto is mounted to. So in removing the carburetor, I have to remove the magneto. The adjustment on a magneto is very fine adjustment. The key is, is to have just enough clearance that it doesn't rub on the magnets. This just keeps getting worse, not better. All right, I took the magneto off. Well, the carburetor is able to finally come out of place. Man, the smell of that is different. A lot of times we get lucky. In fact, most of the time I get lucky and I'm able to clean these up and make them work. And this one is really a mess. It's really sticky and yicky. This diaphragm is hard. It should be soft. After all this work, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to work. Well, I'm going to just clean everything up really well and put it all back together. Cross my fingers. But it was plugged. Once I blew it out, I've cleaned all these parts up and I'm going to put it back together. I uh, blew through it and it you know, seems to flow. Good air passages, so it should have good fuel passage. We'll put it all back together and it cleaned up fairly nice. Really interesting that it has these little plastic tubes that aligns everything. I'm sure some of you viewers out there know exactly what gap this magneto should have. I don't, but I know visually what it should look like. All right, let's see if I can slide all this back together now. 
Well, I just kept trying and trying and trying. I finally was able to get the piece, the little wire lined up with the trigger mechanism. I, I could barely see it here in the window. It just got lucky and I just jammed it down into place. I don't know if I'd be able to do it again. I definitely don't want to do it again. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> that was way more work than I could have ever imagined. If I would have known what I was getting into, I would have turned this one away. But, <laughs> hopefully it runs. If it runs, I'll be very satisfied. Two and a half hours? <laughs> yeah, this is one expensive little chainsaw, but I take a lot of pride in keeping something out of the trash. Let's put some fuel in and try it out. And we'll put a little fuel in the old carburetor, prime it. Full choke. just a matter of sucking and drawing that fuel in. There's some nasty fuel in that fuel filter that was in the bottom of that tank. Might take a while to get all that out. sound flooded, which is a good sign. It might be pulling fuel in. But then again, maybe not. Well, I pulled and pulled and pulled. I prime it, it'll sputter, it'll, it'll run, it'll die. But I just can't seem to pull any fuel out of that tank through that filter. It might be pulling a little bit in there, but I think there's enough gunk in there that it's contaminating the fuel. I don't know any way of getting it out. That filter looks like a big sponge. Uh, I'd probably have to just keep sucking more and more and more or forcing more and more fuel through that to clean it out. Also suspect the carburetor kit needs to be installed. I did find one, six bucks. And the fuel line is all cracked. It's not leaking, but it will. <laughs> so, in summary, <laughs> this chainsaw is not worth it. Uh, took me probably two hours to get to this point. And shop time, it's more than what this chainsaw is worth as a used chainsaw. It's probably worth more than what this is brand new if you bought a new one. Now, to go back and take it apart, I could probably do it in a half hour, 45 minutes, now that I've experienced it. Uh, but because of the way this trigger is, that can take a half an hour just to do that stupid trigger wire. So, it's garbage. Uh, it's not worth messing with. There's a, some great options out here. Here's a couple of them. Got a Craftsman Electric. 20 volt, you can just keep recharging it for 100 to $130. I see them online. That's a great option for a little saw like this. This, this saw is, is for trimming, for pruning. 
So to get an electric one, that's awesome. You don't have to worry about mixing fuel. You don't have to worry about the carburetors going bad. They always get all gunked up and they stop working. That's just the nature of a little two cycle motor like this. So they make it really easy for you to take it apart, rebuild the carburetor, put it back together. That's great, but they don't. <laughs> Another option, if you do want gas, there's some great little pruning chainsaws that are gas operated. Here's one I found. You can get them for under a hundred bucks. So, yeah, I'm going to put this back together. Why, I don't know. <laughs> the chain uh, on the bar could be used on another chainsaw. It feels like it's fairly sharp. So, that might be worth keeping but the rest is garbage. So I'll get it back to the owner and give him the bad news, but not really out much. The, the fuel that was in this was so stinky and so smelly and has filled my garage with this rotten egg stench. <laughs> this had to been 40 years of fuel sitting in this thing. It looks like a chainsaw that might be 40 years old, maybe 30 but it has been sitting a long, long time for that fuel to smell that bad. And I suspect that old rotten fuel is what's damaged the carburetor. Could even have some of those little teeny, teeny lines plugged up in the carburetor itself. So. All right. Well, <laughs> it was a fun experience anyway. Well, yeah, times. <laughs> it's always a good experience to try to save something like this, but... Give me a like if you like what I'm doing. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.